Uh, nope, I already checked the homework and that was it. One time deal. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. Class. yeah. Okay. All right, so in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do is find the foci, uh, the center, and eccentricity, which we're not going to worry about right now, and then sketch the graph. So, um, we've talked about, guys, that's bad. We've talked about two different types of ellipses. We've had a an ellipse that has a vertical major axis symmetry and an ellipse that has a horizontal major axis symmetry. Right, right, right? Okay, so the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, remember what we talked about, if there's a major axis symmetry, then there is also what we call a minor axis symmetry. And remember the length, of your major axis symmetry was 2a, and the length of your minor axis symmetry was 2b, correct? So that just means from the center to one of your vertices was either a or b, you know, depending on which one you're dealing with. Now, what we determined was to determine how do we know if it's going to be a major axis symmetry or a horizontal axis symmetry just by looking at the graph. And what we looked at was, remember, the, whatever a squared was, that was your major axis symmetry. If you had your, because remember this is a squared or b squared under here, and whatever your a squared, which is obviously a represents your major axis symmetry, whatever variable that number was under, that would be which axis of symmetry. So we look at this, and we have two different, um, two different a and b. Well, obviously 25 is larger than 16. So therefore, we know that this would be your a squared, and this is your b squared. Going back to the formula, which I'll which I'll uh, review again. So since you know that your a squared is under the y, we know now we're going to be dealing with a um, ellipse that's going to have a major axis symmetry that's vertical. So once we know that the larger of the two square numbers is under your y variable, let's write down the equation for my, um, my ellipse. So the equation looks like this, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared all over b squared, all over a squared equals 1. All right. And again, why did I know that this was the a squared and this is your b squared? Because remember, 25 is larger than 16, so we know that that has to represent the a rather than the b. OK, so let's go ahead and figure out what everything is going to be. So the first thing we looked at is find the center. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the center is going to be pretty basic. The center is going to be h comma k, right? Okay. Center. Center. Yes, for our ellipse, we have a center. Okay. So the center is going to be h comma k, which is very similar to the vertex of a you know, parabola. So the center for this one is obviously going to be opposite of 3, opposite of negative 5. So we're going to have negative 3, 5. Right? All right. Now, um, let's go ahead and talk about the foci and see why we can't figure it out right now. So if I want to find the foci, remember, on a prep, on an ellipse, we have two little foci, right? Well, I'll just call them foci, but we could call them, should call them foci. So if we have our two little foci up here, we need to find the distance. But remember, how do we find the distance? If this distance, let's just go back, this is, I'm dealing with the total distance. If this distance from here to here is B, this distance from there to there is A, then we know that the distance, if you remember to your foci, from the center is going to be C. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, and by looking at our equation, ladies and gentlemen, do we have a value of C? Do we have a value of C? No. Is there anything that says what C is? No. no, there's not, right? However, do we have a relationship that we know that we can use to find the value of C? Yes. Yes. If you remember that equation that we wrote was A squared equals B squared plus C squared. All right? This is something that we came up with last class period. This is something we came up with last class period in the relationship by using a right triangle to be able to find out what our relationship between A, B, and C was. So this was our formula. Now, do we know what A and B are so we can find C? Of course we do. A squared is going to be 25 
equals 16 plus c squared. So we minus the 16, we get 9 equals c squared. Square root, square root, c equals plus or minus 3. All right, now, here's my center, right? One thing I want you guys to notice is, notice how the two foci, are they on the major axis of symmetry, right? So if I, want, if I know the distance c is now plus or minus 3, my x value of my center is not going to change. All I'm going to do is go up and down, right? Just going up and down. So when I'm looking at for my foci, when I have a vertical major axis of symmetry, all I'm going to do is do h comma k plus or minus c. You guys notice how h is not going to change, right? Your x value of your center is not going to change. You're just going up and down. So when we look at this, we have negative 3 comma 5 plus or minus 3, which is going to give us two values. So I have a negative 3, 8, and we'll have a negative 3, 2. So we're going to have two different foci. Yes? So when it's a, a vertical ellipse, it's h, k, plus or minus c, but when it's horizontal, it's h, plus or minus c, comma k. Exactly. Uh, now let's go and take a look at our vertices. Okay? Now remember, the vertices are also on your major axis of symmetry. Okay? Those are your vertices. And remember what we talked about, the distance from your center to your vertices is A, as the whole distance of your major axis of symmetry is 2A. So from here to here is A. Now, do we know what A is? Not yet. We know A squared is equal to 25. So if I say 25 equals A squared, root both sides, A equals plus or minus 5. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with my foci. The reason being is because the vertices are also on the major axis. The only difference is they're just a difference of A away from the center. But your H or your X value um, of your vertices is the exact same as your center. So for the vertices, when you have a vertical uh, major axis, it's going to be H comma K plus or minus A which in this case is going to be negative 3 comma 5 plus or minus 5, which is now going to produce two different vertices, negative 3 comma 10 and negative 3 comma 0. All right? So now let's go ahead and graph what this would look like. Okay. So we have a center at negative 3, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's our center, right? H comma K. Got it right there. That's, so we have our center right there, negative 3, 5. Then we say we have a foci at negative 3, 8 and negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 5, so negative 3, 6, 7, 8. There's our foci and negative 3, 2. There's our second foci. Then we could say we have vertices at negative 3, 10 and negative 3, 0. So there's one vertice and 8, 9, 10. There's our other vertice. All right? Now you can just go ahead and sketch a, a graph if you want to, but let's go and take a look. What is our value B? How wide is this? Is this wide enough to look like a circle, or is this wide and skinny enough to kind of look like a very, very skinny ellipse? Well, remember. If this is my distance A, then this is my distance B. So we can figure out what B is. We know that 16 equals B squared. So when you root both sides, you get B equals plus or minus 4. So that just means from my center, I'm going to go over 4 and left 4 to find my minor axis. So this would be 1, uh, one 2, 3, 4. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that's going to be my shape of my ellipse. All right? Now, we talked about eccentricity. Eccentricity is going to kind of give you an idea of what this shape is going to look like. Is it going to look more like a circle or is it going to look more like a very stretched out ellipse? So all eccentricity, all your eccentricity is, it's a ratio, all right? And your eccentricity is just going to be the ratio of the distance of your foci over the distance of your A, okay? Where 
can call this E. E has to be greater, it has to be between 0 and 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, we'll talk more about eccentricity in a second. But if I just did my C over A, I know C is now 3. 3 over A, which is 5. So my eccentricity is 3 fifths, or like 0.6. Okay? We'll talk more about what that means here in a second. But that was number 11 off of yeah. your audio.